Hello, hello. Welcome to the living room. How are y'all doing? That was really weak. How are y'all doing? Okay, there's a little bit more enthusiasm. You guys sounded like really sad or something. So I'm glad to see that here that you're a little bit happier than I originally thought. Welcome to the living room. We are so glad that you're here. My name is Allie. If you don't know me, now you do. Hi. Um, I am on staff here with TLR. I get the privilege of coordinating all the events, doing all the behind the scenes details, and getting to spend every single Tuesday night with you guys, which is so much fun. I've been coming to TLR since 2016, so a long timer, and it is honestly one of my favorite places to be. So welcome, so glad you're here. Um, if you wanna take a moment to just say hi to someone next to you, hopefully someone that you don't know yet, branch out, get to know someone new, tell them your favorite burger topping. So we do something every single week. It's called the check-in form, the let us know you're here form. We put a QR code on the screen. And what's great about this is we get to know that you are here. You get to put in any prayer requests you have, any celebrations you have, and we get a chance to actually actively pray for you throughout the week. We send this to some of our core team leaders. They pray for you, they reach out to you, and it's a great way for us to literally get to know you. So if you can scan that beautiful QR code, fill it out, I'll do it too. take super long I'm already done so as you guys keep working on that I just have two quick little announcements for you guys first is we have a couple new t-shirts that we're selling tonight there's not too many but we got some t-shirts from YWAM Lancaster they're doing a t-shirt fundraiser to support a couple of missionaries that live in India in Kolkata they have a mission that helps um, fight sex trafficking they train women to literally create and print these t-shirts and all of the proceeds from these t-shirts that are sold tonight will go to this couple, this missionary um, in India. So we wanted to support them, give back, and um, give you guys the opportunity to support by buying a t-shirt. So if you want to check them out there at the t-shirt stand out there, you can ask questions to them. And the final announcement I have real quick is that the Tyler, Texas trip got the sign-up deadline is postponed to July 1st. So if you're still considering it, you still have time. I know Josh Nieves is going. I know Zach Farlow is going. I know Ryan Chris is going. I know, is, are you Michaela? I know Michaela's going. I know Brianna Mylan's going. There's a bunch of people going. So if you can, you guys that are signed up, can you raise your hands? If you have questions, if you want to go, you should talk to any of those people. I know Ryan's coordinating flights, so you can chat with him. But if you want any more information, it's all at the website worshipcenter.org slash TLR. So that was a lot of information. Can y'all just stand up real quick? Let's take a moment to breathe, reset our, our minds, to focus on Jesus as we enter into worship. Just think about all of your worries from the day, all of the things that were so good, maybe so hard. Just kind of set them aside and be like, you know what? Jesus deserves my 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 attention and all of it unlimited attention so Jesus we love you we thank you that your presence is here Holy Spirit we welcome you we ask you to fill this place to encounter our hearts that our hearts would be prepared to encounter you that we would be able and capable to set aside any and all distractions and just focus solely on you Holy Spirit reveal more of Jesus to us tonight. Help us to learn your character more and more as we worship you, as we hear from your word, Lord. Help us to encounter you in new and deeper ways tonight. We love you. In your name we pray. 
Amen. Psalm 95, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Are you thankful for Jesus? Are you thankful for Jesus? Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. For he is our God and we are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. And let's listen to this. If only you would listen to his voice today. There's an invitation from Jesus to enter into his presence with thanksgiving. And may this be the day that you hear the voice of the Lord. So can we stretch out our hands towards Jesus? We're gonna enter into the presence of God with thanksgiving. He is real. He is real. And he really loves to hang out with his children. We enter in boldly, Lord. We enter in through the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We testify of the goodness of God. 
God you're so worthy thank you for your presence that is with us. We thank you for the honor that it is to worship you. We love you. We couldn't do it without you.
We thank you that you're with us. We thank you for your word and for your desire to speak to us tonight. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Isn't he good? Yeah? Yeah, give him a, a shout of praise. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. Yeah. All right, you guys can have a seat. Thank you, worship team. Wow. What a time, right? I'm not sure where I want this thing tonight, but we're going to figure it out. I'll put it here for now. Oh, wow. Tissues, everything. Allie, can I get a water too? Thank you. That's what you call five star service right here. Oh. After some five star worship. Yeah, thank you, Allie. Isn't the Lord good? Yeah? It's so cool when we can feel his presence with us, right? All right, are we ready for the word? Cool. All right, let's, can we just extend our hands? Lord, we want to receive from you tonight whatever you want to speak. Give us hearts to hear and to receive whatever it is you want to say. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Cool. So we are in a series on Jesus. Isn't that crazy? We're talking about Jesus in church. Jesus. And we've been talking about the different characteristics of Jesus and who he is. We talked about Jesus as our lover, Jesus as our good shepherd. Last week, we talked about Jesus as our friend. And tonight, we get to focus in on Jesus, our Lord. So would you turn to Romans 14? We're gonna start at verse seven. It's kind of our key scripture for tonight. Romans 14, verse seven. This is, uh, Romans is a book or a letter that was written by Paul to the church in Rome. And it says, starting verse seven, for we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, it is to honor the Lord. And if we die, it is to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Verse nine, Christ died and rose again for this very purpose, to be Lord both of the living and of the dead. We're gonna be talking about this tonight. What does it mean for Jesus to be Lord? And then what does it mean for Jesus to be Lord of our lives? I don't like this here. I'm going to move it back. What does it mean for Jesus to be Lord, number one, but also what does it mean for him to be Lord of my life? Today I would say we refer to him, well, I refer to him as Lord a lot. Like, Lord, I don't know if you heard the phrase Lord Jesus. I think that's pretty common to say that today, right? Lord Jesus calling him Lord. And it's easy to use it in this like casual way, like Lord, this. But what does this word Lord, what does it really mean? Lord derived from the Greek, it's like kurios, I think is how it's pronounced. Don't trust that, but something like that. But, it means this, it's he who completely owns something about which he has power of deciding a master. It 
It's also defined as being the possessor and, de and decision maker over something. And then it's also referred to, uh, to as being sovereign, like a prince or chief. It's a title of honor, reverence, and respect by which servants greet their lord or master. In other words, Lord, the one who completely owns me, master, right? The one who has total control over me and the one who leads my life in every area. Is this what I'm thinking when I call him Lord? Is this what we're thinking when we call him Lord? Have I given him complete ownership, total control, full authority to lead my life? Romans 14, 9, that last verse we read says, Christ died and rose again for this very purpose to be Lord both of the living and of the dead. He died and rose again to be Lord. He wants to be our Lord. And as I've been prepping for tonight and prepping this message, I've felt this like tension in my heart personally. It's this realization that Jesus didn't die and rise again just to be called Lord. He died and rose again to be Lord. It's different. He doesn't just want to be called Lord. He wants to be our Lord. How many times have I called him Lord but not held him as Lord of all of my life? The one who completely owns me the one who has total control over me, the one who leads my life in every way. And as I was looking throughout the Gospels, there's like hundreds of times that Jesus has referred to as Lord throughout the Gospels. And I was looking kind of through all the verses and I, I saw this same exact tension. There were these people that were followers of Jesus, that were disciples of Jesus, that, that loved him, believed in him, followed him, were obedient even till death. And then there were also these people that still also referred to him as Lord, but it was more, as like a proper, term for him or like with maybe a little bit of honor for him but not willing to like follow him completely and I would say a lot of these people came seeking to receive something from him but not really wanting to give up their whole lives to follow him How many times have I done this? Saying, Lord, I love you. Yet in some ways, I'm still living in this self-centeredness and pride of wanting to do things my way. And the reality is that Jesus didn't really speak that well of these kind of people. If you go to Matthew 7... Verse 21, you can turn there. Matthew 7, verse 21. He said, not everyone who, who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Get this, only those who actually 
do the will of my Father, and heaven will enter. And then in Matthew 15, verse 7, here he's talking to the religious people. And he says, you hypocrites, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you, for he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideas as commands from God. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. I don't want to just honor Jesus with my lips. It's easy to read this and be like, oh yeah, we deflect it and be like, I know people like that. But if I'm honest, that's been me. There's moments where I'm not willing to maybe walk in obedience to what he's asking me to do. There's moments where I'm not willing to surrender things that maybe it's not something that's like sinful, but he's asking me to lay it down so that he can be glorified. Is Jesus the center of my life? Is my whole life honoring to him? Are all the words that flow from my mouth honoring to others, and more importantly, honoring to him. And my prayer lately has been this. It's, Lord, purify my heart. Cleanse my heart. Because if I'm honest, there can be this ugliness inside sometimes. My thoughts, my feelings aren't always honoring towards him, and I need to bring them before the Lord and submit them under his lordship. Lord, purify my heart. Matthew 5 actually says, Jesus said in Matthew 5, God blesses those whose hearts are pure for they will see God. I wanna see God, right? I wanna see him for who he really is. Lord, would you give me a pure heart? So Jesus doesn't just want to be called Lord. He wants to be our Lord. The one who completely owns me. The one who has total control over me. The one who leads my life in every way. Total surrender to him. And so I want to read Colossians 1. You can turn there. Verse 15, I know we read some of this last week, but I think there's a few verses here that really captures the lordship of Jesus. Colossians 1, verse 15. It says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also 
the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This is the lordship of Jesus. This is the authority that he has. And it's the reality that he reigns as Lord over everything, whether we give him that position in our lives or not. He is Lord. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. He holds it all together. It reminds me of that verse where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He doesn't say, I am here to show you the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no life outside of Jesus. He is Lord. And the only thing that can really separate us from that is sin, which essentially God created us with a free will. He gave us that choice. He created us in his image, giving us choice. And when we chose sin, it brought death. And what death represented was its eternal separation from God. But Jesus came, he submitted himself under like human nature and like human restraints, came as a baby, and then submitted himself under human authority and was crucified, died on a cross, so that he could rise again. And in rising again, he conquered death, which was the only thing that could separate us from him. Isn't that nuts? So we give room for death, and he says, all right, I'll take it back. And now it's through coming under, it's only through Jesus now that we can experience life after death. And it's not just this life after death, but it's only through Jesus that we get to experience life it's so when we come under his lordship. This is what it means in Romans 14, 9, when it says Christ died and rose again for this very purpose to be Lord both over the living and of the dead. He overcame death. Why? So that he could be Lord. So that he could be our Lord. And what's crazy is we get to live, because of Jesus, we get to live in this life that we were actually created for. Not for ourselves, but for him. Everything was created through him and for him. So we see that our original purpose was for Jesus. It wasn't for us. It was for him. And it's by living for him that we actually get to experience this true life that he has to offer. It's this true freedom can only be found in him. True peace can only be found in him. True joy can only be found in him. True hope, true love can only be found in Jesus. And we get to walk in that when we come under his lordship, when we actually live life 
for him. When we try to seek these things outside of Jesus, it will leave us lifeless and disappointed every time. And living this life for him, it it looks like, I would say, two things, but it can be kind of wrapped up in one thing. Number one, it looks like obedience. We read that verse earlier where where Jesus says, only those who do the will of my Father, right? Actually, at another place he says, uh, why do you say, Lord, Lord, but not do what I say? And the reality is that he he gives us instructions and commands actually for our good so that we can live a life that's full of him. And when we walk outside of that, it's not, it's not so much about the rules and regulations. He's just telling us what he's like and he wants to spend time with us. And when we walk outside of that, it's outside of God and his heart. And so he's revealing his heart because he wants to do life with us and because it's for our good. Like Paul said in verse Romans 14, seven, for we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, it is to honor the Lord, and if we die, it is to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. This is what Jesus as Lord looks like. He's the creator, the source of life. He's the sustainer of life. He truly knows what's best for us. Why would we not surrender our ways and come under his Why would we not surrender a whole life to him? He doesn't just want to be called Lord, he wants to be Lord. And this surrender looks like, it can look like, I already mentioned obedience, but it looks like living to honor him. It's giving up my rights. It's living a life of purity, which Essentially, when we, if we want to live a life of purity, it's, it's reading the word and actually receiving it as the word of the Lord and doing what it says. It's just pure heart and niceness. Humility. And when we live in surrender to Jesus, we get to experience the fruits that I mentioned earlier. It's this freedom, this hope, this peace, this joy, this love. There's lots more. But it also means we live different lives than what we lived in the past. For me personally, an example of this is I love to play hockey. And hockey culture is we're going to trash talk all we want, and it's a lot of fun. But I've learned pretty quickly that you can't live that out and honor Jesus at the same time. There was a moment recently where I was super convicted because... There was a guy that was being annoying. I won't, I won't call him names on the stage, but he's being annoying. And the next time I was like, ah, I'd be clever to say, kind of say a jab. So I just was like, hey, you're not good enough to be a jerk. <laughs> yeah. And immediately it was like, what the, well, yeah, anyways, we're not gonna. But immediately it was like, oh my gosh, like I'm like, what am I doing? There's other moments where like it, you, you want your, your flesh comes and you just want to do something. And it's like, even in those moments, there's not an excuse for me to not honor Jesus. There's no, there's no good excuse to not honor others and honor the Lord. I can no longer say whatever I want to when I'm playing video games with my cousins out of frustration, Right? I can no longer find my identity in anything outside of Jesus. For me, it's sports like, or hobbies. It can be our jobs, our friends, our relationships. 
I can no longer hold bitterness or unforgiveness in my heart. I lay things down and sacrifice them or lay things down and sacrifice things that I love because time with him is more important. It changes our priorities. There's so much more, but it looks different to actually see him as Lord and walk with him as our Lord because he's master. He knows what's best. And the reality is, the the great thing about this is that the fruit of surrender isn't just like these good things, it's actually this, a transformed heart. That as we walk in relationship with Jesus, he promises to transform our hearts. As As we're living in his word, there's this transformation that happens that actually I no longer desire some of the things that I used to do or the things that I used to walk in, because I've experienced that life with Jesus is so much greater. And that's super freeing. He promises to transform our hearts. It's not so much about following this to-do list. It becomes this relationship that why would I do anything else but do what pleases the Lord? He wants to be our Lord. Worship team, you can come up. Romans 14, seven through nine, I'm gonna read it again. For we don't live for ourselves or die for ourselves. If we live, it is to honor the Lord. And if we die, it is to honor the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Christ died and rose again for this very purpose, to be Lord both of the living and of the dead. He wants to be our Lord. When we understand his lordship and who he really is, as the creator, the sustainer, how can we do anything but bow and surrender to this Jesus? How can I do anything but surrender and bow to him? And so tonight, I have two questions, it's, it's kind of twofold. First of all, it's, is, is he really Lord of our lives? Is he really my Lord? And the second part is this, what in our lives needs to be surrendered to him? Are there things in our lives that we need to lay down in order for him to be Lord? Are there thought patterns, habits that I need to make adjustments to in order for him to truly be Lord. What does it look like? And so we're gonna go back into worship. We're gonna chill here for a moment. And I wanna leave room for the Holy Spirit to continue to speak. What does this look like? How do we live this out? What is he calling you to personally? And as we worship, I wanna give an opportunity if, if you feel like there's something that you need to lay down at Jesus' feet. If you want, you can come up front and kneel down. 
give it to him. Also, if you feel like there's something that you need to surrender and maybe you're struggling and you want prayer for it, or even if it means you feel like you need to confess it to somebody, I've asked uh, a few of our core leaders if they would just come up and be on the sides of the stage. And you can come up and ask for prayer. Or you can just stay where you are and focus on Jesus. The question is, Lord, what are you speaking? What are you calling us to? Just asking that. Cool. So Lord, actually we can all stand. Lord, we thank you for your goodness. We thankful, thank you for your faithfulness to us, even when we were unfaithful. For your sacrifice, for the life that we get to experience. And Lord, whatever you want to do in our hearts right now, we say have your way. Would your voice be clear? We love you. In Jesus' name.
So Dave felt like he had a word, and I just asked him if he would read it. All right, so I woke up with two scriptures this morning, and this was one of them. It's Isaiah 40, verse 2. I'll just read, the, I'll just read from the beginning, starting in verse 1. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground, and he steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. So, if there's anybody here and you're in despair, you're in a pit, a pit of mud, miry clay, we're going to sing a little bit more. And if you want to come to the front, I want to pray for you. I believe this scripture is for you. God, Jesus, he doesn't come down in the pit with you. He picks you up out of it. And I believe the Lord wants to pick you up out of the miry clay if you're in a pit of despair today. So come on down to the front and we want to pray for you. Your name, cause your name. 
Alexi's baby right now. That baby belongs to Jesus. Lord, we intercede for our families, for our kids. We intercede for our moms, our dads, our grandparents, our cousins, Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that the love of Christ that rests in us would be undeniable. May our light shine. May our light shine in the darkness, Lord. Soften the hearts of our moms and our dads. I pray, Lord, for our grandparents. May they be on fire and set ablaze for the glory of the Lord. Lord, we say Gen Z belongs to you. Gen Z belongs to you. Satan, get your hands off what belongs to the Lord. Our kids belong to you, Lord. This church belongs to you. Let's intercede for worship center right now. Lord, we pray over this church. We pray over our leaders. We pray over Dustin, Lord. We thank you that you are empowering them through the spirit of God. Protect this church. Protect this body. May we stay on the narrow road of Jesus, Lord. Protect and keep living room, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that the people in this room would break fear. Fear would break. Insecurity and doubt would break. And I pray, Lord, that you would mark. You would mark individuals for your glory. We command security to go Lord I pray that you would mark this place through the blood of the Lamb protect our minds from untruths Lord shine your light on anything Lord that is not of you
Try that, Jesus. There it is. We love you. We thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. We thank you that you meet us right where we are. We worship you. You deserve it all. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. The Lord's good. Cool. Well, I want to let you know if you if you didn't come and get prayer, specifically if, if what Dave shared was, uh, would you be able to stay down here? Cool. If, if what Dave shared really connected with your heart and you weren't able to come up for prayer or you didn't want to, but now you do, he's going to stand up front here. You can ask for prayer. Also, if there's anything else you need prayer for, um, he'll be up here. Sterling, can you? Uh, you might have responsibility. Rebecca, can you be up here? we have a guy and a girl. Um, Also, a few things that we mentioned earlier. The one thing is that the Tyler, Texas trip, the deadline is this week. It's July 1st. So if you want more information, you can go to the connect tables out here uh, and find out more information. If you are new here and you want to get connected a little more, uh, I would really encourage you to stop by the connect tables Um, There's people there that would love to chat with you and get to know you. Uh, Also, if you have questions about relationship with Jesus, we would love to chat with you back there. Um, Is there something I'm missing? Huh? Oh, also t-shirts that we mentioned. That is is connected with one of our global partners uh, who are all over the world. And so we love to help support and help them out. And so if you want a t-shirt, check them out. It's a sweet way to get a cool shirt, which I need, and also support somebody. Cool? Well, can we all stand? Let's close uh, just praying, thanking the Lord, and specifically asking. Can we just pray for one another? So if you want to get in groups of like three or four, I want to specifically pray for a hunger for the word for a a fresh hunger for his word and for this understanding that comes when we read it. So can we just begin to pray for the people around you? Groups of three, four, or five, doesn't really matter. And just begin to pray for a hunger for the word. We want to know him more. So just begin to pray.
We thank you for tonight. We thank you for this time together. And Lord, we just ask that as we leave tonight that there would be an increased hunger for you. This increased hunger for your word. This deep desire to know you more. We love you. And Jesus, we just ask that this week, as we, as we get in your word, would it come to life? Holy Spirit, would you bring it to life in our hearts, in our minds? Help us to understand the things that might be hard to understand at times. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to us. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool. Well, that's it for tonight. We love you guys. I'd really encourage you to stick around, get to know some people, hang out for a while, and then we'll see you next week. We love you guys.